Welcome back to Let's Play Darkest Dungeon. I'm your host, Time Pants, and today we are going after the Shrieker. So, I have never fought one before, but unfortunately, I do kind of know the gimmick. Like, I had been reading a little bit online about Darkest Dungeon, even though I wasn't playing back when the patch first dropped. And as you can see, I have come loaded for bear, uh, focused primarily on accuracy, because I do know that this is a very dodgy enemy. So, given how dodgy this uh, this thing is, I think the way forward is pretty clear. The Arbalist and Occultist are party choices or character choices, specifically because they focus on landing that mark and dropping a uh, an enemy's uh, dodge score uh, just bottoming it out so um i definitely want to plan for this run being perhaps uh, a bit longer tougher than i might have otherwise expected you know I, I know it's a short mission but i don't know what what we're going to encounter so i figure no sense taking foolish chances let's just kind of load up here and i mean the blood probably we don't need it but I don't know what to expect, so, you know, whatever. Um, command is also, I think, a pretty good choice because we can, yeah, we can bump up our character's accuracy. So even if we don't land one of these, uh, these marks or the debuff doesn't stick, you know, no problem. We're still going to get the, uh, we're still going to get a way to increase our accuracy and hopefully take the Shrieker down. So, uh, let's get going. The Ancestor probably has something to say. No? Just gonna... Gonna let us stew in the moment here a bit. Okay. I don't know. The tension's palpable. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, really? Nothing? Huh. Oh! Oh, this is how... This is how it works. Alright, um... Okay, so I had bumped up the uh, the ancestor's dialogue there because I thought he was he was gonna, gonna say something. Um, so yeah, the uh, the reason for the grave robber, very similar to every other sort of principle that it, oh that I've observed for the run so far, is her uh, her ability to increase her own uh, accuracy just by attacking. So maybe we're not gonna hit the first attack. That's fine, but Eventually, one of these is going to break through. So, we have the mark already. Yeah, so probably just take care of the man at arms. Uh, he definitely, I mean, in, in addition to just it being a bad policy to have a character die, um, I think it's it's wise to uh, to keep him around because his uh, ability to, to improve our accuracy is going to be huge. So, I... Yeah, I don't know anything about, like, how the Shrieker fights. I just know that it's a giant pain in the ass to hit it. But, uh, going well so far, clearly. We, um, yeah, we've pretty, pretty well managed to, uh, to secure a victory here. I was kind of wondering if maybe we should... I was, yeah, kind of wondering if maybe we should hold off on the Grave Robber's uh, lunge as kind of a finishing move. But I'm not sure that's entirely necessary. Now, the bleed here is definitely concerning. So, yeah, let's do what we can to see to it that our, uh, our healer doesn't get bled out. And, yeah... You know, God knows what uh, what we would do if we lost one of our abilities to mark. But yeah, we have to make sure to keep the mark up because if something's getting three, oh God. Yeah, if something's getting three actions per round on us and this was a mistake, yeah, that's pretty dumb. I mean, the dodge, that's good. But yeah, if something's getting three, ugh, three attacks around on us, we are not going to, to win a, a protracted fight. So let's, um, let's do the responsible thing here and, and get this handled 
quickly. Um, yeah, I think it's more important to make sure that the other three characters are going to be able to... Oh, fuck. Please don't bleed. Okay. Uh -huh. Good thing we used that holy water. Um... Ah oh, shit. I was going to say it's it's probably more important to make sure that the other three characters are able to land their attacks than it is for the man at arms to get a single swipe that's not even a terribly high percentage. Okay, well. Um no need to uh to concern ourselves with um well, is, is there more? What, like, what else? Oh, no it this quest is, it is one room. This is a studio quest. Uh, very low rent, not exactly the, the best neighborhood, but it uh, will definitely do you. Okay, so I'm still not going to give you guys a budget run. Okay, so I, I did hear about the special shrink, uh, shrieker quirk, so that's good. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to do a, a six minute video, so... What the hell? Let's uh, do another run. I'm not sure where we're gonna go. Um, yeah, the Black Plague. That's nasty. Creeping cough. Also nasty. I'm not sure why uh, why Thruldi there was uh, making out with with the crow, but you know, no accounting for taste, I guess. Um, I don't know. We probably probably don't need to mess around with optimizing this week for quirks or anything like that it's not like we have a ton of money anyway so yeah it's just i am trying to to round out the bottom of our roster because i'm anticipating that probably whenever we encounter the uh the crimson court boss for the uh the second leg of the quest we're uh probably gonna lose somebody probably a lot of somebody's so let's uh you know, let's let's have some people there to uh, to shore up the roster when that inevitably happens. Um, why not? Yeah, why don't we do the cove? When I was actually trying to prepare for this uh, this party to fight the Shrieker, one of the things that I noticed is I only have like one focus ring. So a second one is is not bad. I'm just trying to see if if we have anybody here who is. Uh, especially suited for the cove. Um, and we have a few choices, I guess. Um, so yeah, we basically I, I just didn't want I uh, yeah, didn't want to miss in that fight and it worked out pretty well. One thing I really like about the uh, sort of the rebalance that came with the uh, Crimson court is uh, yeah, that the occultist now can heal from the second rank. The occultist didn't need to be better. Let me just make that clear right up front. The occultist, I still maintain, is probably the second best character in the game. Behind the Hellion. Maybe the occultist is number three behind, like, I don't know. I keep hearing the flagellants really good by people who are much better at this game than me. So I'm, I'm inclined to take their word for it. That said, I mean, the occultist, what don't you have? You have high crit chance and a decently good melee attack. You have AOE damage. You have a stun. You have a heal. Like, oh, you know, the heal's unreliable. Sure. But, I mean, you have pulls. You have marks. You have a really good debuff. What, what do you get the man who has everything? I guess a fancy decal to put on his, his sweet healing skill. Because, oh my god, they did not need to buff the occultist. But please nobody say anything. Because he's, like, the occultist is, is my favorite class. Like, by far. Oh my god. Um... So I uh, apologize for this, uh, this being so slow. Like if you, I know if you, uh, you know if you go slow, you're gonna have a you know in between a very exciting run and what I mean 
honestly, the, the climax has probably already happened. So if you were tuning in just to see what fighting the Shrieker is like, and you know, you were hoping that it's it's only gonna ramp up from here, I apologize. I appreciate you watching, but uh, I don't think we're gonna have anything uh, probably quite as exotic for the rest of the run. But uh, yeah, just drive all all the uh, the the nearly dozen of people who watch uh, by telling them that uh, yeah, this isn't for you. No, um, but yeah, if you if you go slow between uh, between two cool runs. Um, not cool runnings. This is not about the Jamaican bobsled team, although we are sorely missing uh, John Candy uh, having an appearance as, of course, the ancestor's wacky younger brother. Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna have a shitty time if <laughs> if everything goes as slowly as it has here. And actually, that reminds me. This I swear I didn't plan this segue, but. <laughs> going slowly and, and having a shitty time. Those words actually have some, uh, some personal significance, if, uh, if you'll indulge me here. Um, I, I have mentioned probably more often than is prudent or necessary, but you, know, you never know. There could be a, a handful of new viewers who have been enticed you know, by some Crimson Court content. Hey, who's this Time Pants guy? I, I hear he's He's nearly noticed. Um, that, that is remarkably generous of you, although not sure accurate. Uh, yeah, I, I used to be a teacher in Japan. Like, I started in 2007 as basically a, you know, a, a well-dressed clown at a uh, proprietary conversation school. And uh, you know, came back, got my my uh, my master's in education here in the U.S. and with that I was able to actually get like a a real teaching job when I went back to Japan in like 2013 as like a real teacher in an actual school and you know cool right um, one of you know one of the advantages of being an actual teacher is you get to go on actual field trips and that was awesome we went to uh, now, what was it? One time we went to this uh, this orchard. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, anything about like Japan at all. Like I didn't. I did not know anything. I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I, I first went over there. But uh, they have what are called like Nikon. Uh, it's like like tiny oranges, like like mandarin oranges or or uh, clementines. I don't know if they're the same. I'm not much of a botanist, but we, uh, yeah, we went to the orchard, and the the hook there, the the way that they get people in the door is like, hey, if can you climb a tree? If so, all the mikan, all the uh, all the oranges you can eat. Well, damn, that that's a pretty good deal. So we basically just went there. Turn these kids loose like a fucking plague of locusts on their orchard, and they just had a great time. It was awesome. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if you know much about orchards, but they are in fields, you know, grass, mud, that sort of thing. Well, it rained like a motherfucker, like the night before we went. So. We, uh, we basically were sloshing around in a, a mud pit as we were walking out to, you know, to the trees. So it was, you know, nasty, mushy, marshy, and uh, so, yeah, it was really not pleasant to walk in. Um, well, because of this, we kind of had to uh, had to schedule accordingly. It took us longer than usual to, to get out into uh into the orchard longer to get back so i was on duty uh taking some of the kids to go use the bathroom we were kind of taking the kids in, in shifts and i uh i took this group and the last girl in my group she's a girl named hina now i'm going to describe her in terms that might might sound like like i'm 
kind of being rude, especially to a child, and especially to somebody who is not here to, to defend themselves. But she's a bit of a space cadet, like just really kind of off in her own world. I know kids are like that, of course, but you know she's six years old, is not five or six years old, is kindergarten, and she just would stare off into space, and she's just gone, man. So I knew we kind of had to keep things moving when it was her turn to go use the bathroom. Well, is this, uh, is not, not really a whole lot of, for a modest society, there's not really a whole lot of modesty about uh, nudity, especially for kids, because, like, we had, um, we had, like, like, swimming pool days, and the kids would just, like, change right there in the classroom. I was like, is this okay? I feel like like this I'm I'm is this a sting operation <laughs> like what what are you trying to get on me um well apparently I've, I've probably just just uh I probably just put all the dirt out there myself but anyway it was really difficult to to get used to it's just very different from here in the U.S. where you know you go in the changing room and you know you're waiting outside you're like kids are you, are you ready yet um so yeah, this, uh, this girl, he knows her turn to, to use the restroom. She goes inside and sure enough, she's like spacing out. So it's like, okay, um, Hina, come on, let's, let's go. Hina, Hina, speed it up. Hina, let's go. Sploosh. I was just like, oh my God, no, this can't be happening. So, you know, I turn around and sure enough, she is, like, okay, so it's basically a Johnny on the spot with a, again, a Japanese twist. It's like a, a Jean Bay on the spot. Uh, they're, the toilets in Japan are like, um, well, they're, they're quote, colloquially known as squatters because basically they're just a hole in the ground. And this is a portable hole in the ground. So, very bad Dungeons and Dragons item, by the way. Um, so she's like, down like one leg up past her fucking knee in sewage <laughs> like human waste piss and shit you know like you would not believe i was just like oh jesus god no like why would you why would you do this to one of one of your beloved children and then why would you do this also to this other girl no i i liked her he was nice um but just oh no 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 please please no uh but it turns out the answer was yes it really did happen and so now the question is well how do you deal with it smart guy you you got a master's degree and they teach you anything about when a child is up to their knees and shit turns out i was sick that day so like Finally, another teacher got up there um, and they like brought, you know, like baby wipes and like those moist hand sanitizer, like wipes. Yeah. You ever try like scrubbing shit off of like a human leg with those? Uh, they do not work as well as advertised. They kill, you know, they say they kill 99.9% .9 of, of germs. I'm a little dubious about that claim. So anyway, uh, the pants were a total, a total, you know, I, I would say a, a wash, but obviously that's not the case because there is, you know, you might be able to get the feces off. You might even be able to get the stink out, but there is no possible way that you can like get the fucking curse of the portable hole in the ground out of there. Like those are always gonna be the shit pants. You'll never, you can't wear them again. How could you? Uh, so yeah, we, we finally get her, her all scrubbed off and like cleaned up as best as humanly possible. And you know, we got a gotta just kind of the light bring things back uh, if you will like try and try and recover uh, with some sort of grace um, so 
It was the end of the day, fortunately, so we were heading back to the bus. And the bus was, uh, yeah, the bus was parked on the other end of, like, probably a, a mile, I would say, maybe a little less, but not much, of gravel road. So here we have Hina, no pants, no shoes, no socks. I mean, those are, those are, those are gone, you know? The, don't, don't cry for them. They're already dead. Uh, so obviously we can't have her like walking through the tall grass or like the gutter on like the ditches on the sides of the, the gravel road. So, I mean, there's only one thing you can do, right? So I picked her up, hoisted her up on my shoulders and little shit leg Hina rode piggyback all the way back to the, uh, all the way back to the bus, and again, you might think that I am, uh, I'm being unnecessarily harsh. Like I said, I like Hina, she's a great kid, but she did kick me in the eye with her shit leg. So, I feel like we're even, we're even, we're even now. Like, Hina got the last laugh. Um, so, the uh the lesson oh my festering mm. fear consumes that's, the mind. Mm. Mm. Well, that's not good um so anyway moral of the story is don't rush children in, in the bathroom like you know i i would imagine statistically speaking maybe uh, a few of you listening have kids kid um yeah it's, it's all right, it's all right. The uh, car is still gonna be there, the bus is still gonna be there um, if they take a long time. So just, just some, some battles you just don't have to fight. Um, so how's the run going? Well, better than the, uh, the trip to the orchard, that's, that's for damn sure. No, this is, this is going well. Um, I, this, is, this is going exceedingly well this particular fight no i mean i want to make that abundantly clear am i handling this fight well god no this has dragged on far longer far longer than it, it really has any right to so i think at this point we just have to focus on like not optimizing our damage and getting the most bang for our buck out of every single attack and why don't we just take take a kill you know get one one kill. We just need to see the the ball go in the hoop, so to speak. So yeah, let's let's just murder him. And yeah, let's let's just take our kill. So now we only have one creature left, and I don't even think the Chevaliers have the ability to. Um, yeah, I don't think they they even have the ability to actually inflict Crimson Curse. So. With that in mind, this should be a fairly straightforward path to victory. Okay, and especially if, thank goodness, it didn't get another action. So, that was awful. That was, I mean, if you don't think less of me for the story about uh, rushing a, a child in a bathroom uh, for no other reason than to hurry and making her, you know, take the fucking drop into a literal cesspit then the uh the, my inelegant handling of of that that combat combat encounter for sure would uh would definitely do it but i think the first one probably should make you think less of me because i i still have not forgiven myself like i really I just, like, I heard sploosh. I am the most wicked man alive. What have I done? And, oh, God. Like, it's all it's all flooding back now. I'm getting the shakes. Um, but, yeah, this, uh, this run, definitely fine. Like, really comfortably fine, honestly. I still still cannot believe it is beyond my ability to accept and understand 
that they buffed not only the occultist, remember, he can heal from the second rank now, which, okay, not only makes his heal just better, not only gives him access to, I would, I would argue, a better set of skills, no, on top of that, it makes him more resistant to getting shuffled. That's, I mean, having a healer in the party, you know, their position in the party is an enormous liability. But no, not the only did the occultists the get buffed, the, the Hellion got buffed. To follow it. Like, that, that building, that district that uh, allows the party to have 14 rest time instead of 12, if you have a Hellion or a Leper, or a Hellion in the party, holy shit, like, Red Hook, that's, that's exceptional. That's really good. I mean, most people go their whole lives just dreaming about an opportunity like that. You know, that's, that's why we have, yeah, that's why we have movies about, like, you know, the scrappy kids from the other side of the tracks, your, your uh, bad news bears, your mighty... Your mighty's duck, like that's that's the dream is that one day you know you'll you'll have this this breakthrough, this epiphany, and suddenly you'll you'll be the man or woman that you know you were always always meant to be. That's the leper in this situation, and the hellion is basically like, oh hey, uh, mighty ducks. Uh, Banks and uh, what are there's Goldberg, he's the goalie. Uh, Fulton, he's the the big tough kid. I don't remember the names of anybody else. Charlie, Charlie, of course, the uh, you know this uh, scrappy kid with the heart of gold who turned out was not very good at hockey. Um, and wonders can be found in the most. Yeah, sorry guys. Um, Coach Bombay is. Uh, is friends with Wayne Gretzky. We actually just got him on the team. So uh, you guys, you know, fill space, skate around, have fun. We're, we're just going to go win the championship uh, without you. You'll still get a trophy. I mean, don't get me wrong. Your, your, name's, your name's still going to be on the plaque, but this is, the, this is the Gordon Bombay and Gretzky show. So, you know, don't. Don't stress out. Laden with loot. How, if you're a fan of the leper, how do you reconcile that? Just Red Hook shit all over your dreams. Like, oh, finally, a reason to bring a leper into the party. 14 rest, that's game changing. Oh, right. I guess the Hellion also has that ability. The Hellion. That was a really, was a really tough sell, you know, to get a Hellion in the party. Like, you know, there's so much competition for a front rank front rank damage dealer you know you could take a character that can attack any row and has the best stun in the game uh aoe stun except for the plague doctor and and hers is restricted to the back rows you know you could do that you could take that character uh or what about the leper a character that can do nothing from the third and fourth rank has good damage and abysmal accuracy and their camping skills really aren't that great I mean what, what you're gonna take this I'm, I'm not seeing the uh, you know I'm seeing a lot of con in the the leper side of the argument is all I'm saying huh that's annoying but yeah there's there was no need. There was no need whatsoever to buff the Hellion and, like, make her a more appealing choice for a party. Plenty appealing enough. Um, so I, I do have, I guess, some reservations about a few of the balance changes. And I think the, the trinket, I think the, the trinket modifications, like the, uh, the rebalance that, that Red Hook did, it borders on tone deaf. Like, 
I, I am genuinely not sure what the objective was for a lot of those. Like, I understand, okay, the Eldritch rings are like the anti-class uh, of monster rings. Uh, you know, anti-human, anti-beast, anti-Eldritch. Like, I get giving those a minus eight dodge uh, instead of a uh, the minus two that they had, which was basically... I mean, that's not even like a mitigating factor. It's, it just does not figure in to whether you're, you're going to equip that. You're not thinking, well, I don't know if I can sacrifice the two dodge. The only thing that you're thinking is, oh my god, plus 25% damage uh, at basically, basically no cost. Uh, no, I, I totally get rebalancing that, and honestly, I wouldn't have even been salty if they like darkness closes in if they like haunting the heart made it you know minus 10 or minus 12 dodge um you know that's that's fine but yeah it seems like they made a lot of trinkets just sort of generally worse and i just i don't feel like there was any any real reason to do so especially when there are a lot of trinkets out there that are just genuinely bad and I don't think every trinket needs to be equally good but there should not be bad trinkets where there's like more of a drawback to equip it uh, to equipping it than than actually you know the trinket provides uh, and there are quite a few of those so not sure why those didn't get much of a bump if any um, so that is our run for today. I think that went fantastically well. Um, I hope I hope you don't hate me too much uh, any more than I hate myself. Thanks for watching. Bye.